It's Virtual CES 2021 at geekazine.com. All right, continuing coverage oh. of CES 2021 Virtual. Jeffrey Powers here, and we are we're here with Pet Pulls. And uh, I, I'm sorry, I forgot your name already. There's a lot of people here, so Andrew Gill. <laughs> Andrew Gill. Okay, so yeah. uh, and and you have Pet Pull Pet Pulls. And what what mm -hmm. is what is Pet Pulls? Oh. Peppers, by the way, I'm Andrew Gill. I'm a CEO for Global Operations. Um, and then I'm just here. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, Peppers is AI-powered smart dog color that tells you how your dog feels. Uh, using voice uh, technology, and then uh, uh, Peppers actually detects and, uh, and then tracks and analyze five uh, different emotional state of the dog, like a dog when dog is happy and, and uh, sad and, and anxious and relaxed. So uh, combined with this um, uh, activity tracker and rest tracker, actually Pepper's device uh, help dog owners to uh, understand better and manage their dog, you know, dog's emotional and physical well-being. Okay. So how does that work? Okay, um, here's a uh, thing. Dogs, uh, you know, we do have a device in here. Uh, this is a Pepper's device. And then uh, this device will be worn um, by the dog around the neck. And then uh, when dog barks, those barking sound will be recorded in this device. And then uh, this device is connected with the home Wi-Fi and then uh, send those voice files to our main server. And our main server, we have uh, our own unique Pepper's uh, voice recognition algorithm. Uh, based on the uh, 10K uh, bark samples and then uh, five different breeds and all age differences and uh, weights and heights, different physical differences. And based on that data, and then we create a unique algorithm. So with that algorithm, those dogs' files, uh, voices, uh, you know, uh, will analyze and then come back to um, uh, application of the dog owner's cell phone with five different emotional status, as I mentioned, sad, happy, and angry, and uh, anxious, and relaxed. So in real time, dog owners will realize that how they dog, their dog feels when they bark. And then uh, actually uh, with that information, dog owners can make a, a, a you know, a, a effective and a, 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 a better uh, actions toward a uh, dog. Okay. Yeah, so if they know if they're anxious, then there might be, you know, fireworks going on in the background. And then they know that they're anxious or uh, and so they can soothe them, give them treats or or uh, or make the make an area more comfortable for them. That's that's correct. And then also, uh, you know, if I if I may share the, some of the stories, then one story that I shared, uh, that we collect from our current user saying that, you know, in Korea, dog owners are usually um, and you know, leaves home for work and then dogs are behind at home. And then mm. the house, you know, the living uh, environment is that, you know, the dog, you know, people are living in a kind of small apartment complexes, right? Yeah. So uh, she, dog owner, actually left home, uh, left, you know, uh, behind, leave the behind, leaving the dog behind. And then all of a sudden, uh, there is an emotional uh, state has come through her you know, application and cell phone. And usually it's like a, a short bark and then it does not, it, it didn't kind of a, a last for a long time. But at certain time, at that particular time, the voice analysis comes to a, a app like more than 10 minutes, like 15 minutes continuously. At the same time, there is a rapid increase of activity uh, rate. And then uh, she kind of noticed that there is something wrong. And then, um, and then I'll uh, ask a neighbor to check out the dog and then uh, found out that, you know, her dog actually made some uh, accident on the floor. So she okay. came back home and then and, and it took her dog out to the, and brought her uh, dog to the hospital. And then, uh, yes, the dog was uh, sick. And then, uh, well, later on, and at the end of the story, you know, the dog was fine. But in this case, this kind of device really become really meaningful for the dog owners, sometimes saving the life. And then, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and and, and it, it, that's why we believe that this could be a, a, a life-saving device for some of the owners. Okay, yeah, definitely. It, uh, if if you know what your dog's where you what your dog is barking or or or, or doing, then it's easier to to deduce and and make change 
from there. So right. So while this is playing, uh, I'm assuming this is this is for. You keep it playing while it's playing. Uh, I'm assuming this is for iPhone and Android. Yes, that's uh, that is you know our device is comparable with the uh, iPhone and then also Android as well. And then our app can be downloaded from the Google Play and uh, Apple Store as well. Okay. And then our device will work perfectly in a 2.4 gigahertz uh, frequency environment. And then uh, we are using home Wi-Fi as well. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. Now, does your does this connect up with any of the home assistants like Amazon or uh, or Apple HomeKit or anything like that? That's uh, our plan. You know, um, we want to work with uh, this IoT device uh, and, and other devices as well. We also want to connect our device with like an Alexa or you know you know you know in, in Korea it's a KT Gigazini or. Other, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, connect, you know, uh, connection uh, devices connection, as yeah. well. So, um, okay, it, that's our project in the near future. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because okay. I could see this. You were talking about the situation where the dog was uh, was barking, and the neighbor had to come in. You know, if there was a situation, it, it could all be automated at that point. So, if the I dog is barking. And uh, the neighbor neighbor texts you yeah. and says, "Hey, there's something going on with your dog." You push a button that lets them in the house. They can they can deal with the uh, they can take a look at the dog and see what's going on, and then maybe report back to you. So it's just a little bit more automation on their side. I like this a lot. It's it's for dogs. Yeah, Is I it for any other pets or just dogs? Well. Unfortunately, it's all about dogs. Not yet. We are, we are not able to get you know get the cats yet. <laughs> but it's all about the dogs. <laughs> That's too um, bad because I want to find out what my cat's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I really yes, probably that's gonna be the next project then for us. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. So, and you got a lot of cat cafes there, so you could you could that's, you could that's correct. Yes, get a lot yeah. of data off that. So, so you're gonna show <laughs> us you're gonna show us how the app works here now. Right, that's correct. Um, why don't you open our app? Uh, so, you know, it was uh, downloaded, and then we will show you that in the, that's the main page that you will see. Okay, and then who's, if you whose go, dog is that? It's a chat chat. Uh, you know, that's one of our, uh, you know, current users' dog. But okay. uh, it, it's, it was created uh, for profile, but we empty all the data in here. There's nothing in there. So why don't you go to the main um, profile page? So uh, that's the first page that you see when you open this app. And then, uh, you know, current condition is normal, whatnot. But if you go down to the bottom, there is a three boxes there. There's a rest box, there is activity and emotions. So uh, what we, I'm just going to show you some demo on emotions. So go back, go to the emotion. Okay, here you go. There is a no data is available because uh, there is a no barking sound actually was a transfer or collected and transfer and analyze it. So that's what we're going to do here today. Okay. okay. All right. Let's play some barking sound here. Ruff, ruff, ruff. <laughs> <laughs> that was me, by the way. Is it? Is it? Is it about sound or is it, is it, does it also have so any type of uh, sensors on the collar to kind of feel the dog? Uh, we only, right now, it's only activity uh, tracker and rest tracker. So we are, uh, rest tracker is basically, um, uh, you know, uh, based on, everything is based on, you know, rest tracker and the uh, uh, emotions are based on our, you know, dog's barking sound. And okay. activity, activity tracker actually based on the dog's uh, body movement. Um, so, uh, uh, of course, in the near future, we want to put in some sort of um, heart rate checker to uh, kind of monitor the general health of the dog as well. And okay. then uh, hopefully, uh, uh, and other features. Those are uh, 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 features are out there already, like a GPS, dog GPS uh, trackers. So, but right now we are focusing on the dog's voice. And then as you might understand, Dog's fight is heavy. It's it's a lot, and then it takes a lot of energy, and then uh, um, energy to transfer. So yeah. um, everything is kind of connected. So we, well, right now we're focusing on the voice alone. 
Yeah, that, that's why I was okay. asking. That was why I was asking about the voice because uh, because then my next question is, wouldn't you get a, a little bit of false positives? Maybe you're in a small area where there's a lot of dogs and then the dog next mm. door is barking really loud. Would that affect your tr your dog's tracker? Right, I think that's a good question. But we set the uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the distance. So this uh, device is here, and then mm -hmm. this will, will be placed around the dog's neck. And then uh, from here, this device to dog's mouth, we uh, kind of uh, give the numbers. You know, uh, so within certain radius, we are seeing that right now, what in, in in Asian context, like a thirty to thirty-five centimeters would be ideal. So. Uh, in that radius, voice will be collected mostly effectively. So beyond that radius, like a human voice or a car honking, honking sound or other voices, other dogs' voices beyond that radius, considered to be as a noise in a, basically our main server. And then our okay. algorithm kind of separate them as a noise and then disregard them. So only the voices collected within that voice will be collected and analyzed at the okay. current system. Okay. So I get the idea, okay. and uh, yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about uh, is is it out yet, or are you? Uh, yeah, it's out. It's out. That's why we are just uh, okay. Why don't you play? Uh, yes, just uh, well, I, th I think we I think we got the I think we got the idea here. So um, okay, let, let's talk about price and availability. Uh, yeah, price and and where people can get this. Right. This price is $99 uh, for um, our device. It comes with um, uh, orange color um, uh, uh, strap. And then it, it, it's a small size strap, but if they want to have a longer size strap, and then it could, uh, with the device, it's $108. And then uh, people can buy this device uh, from our website, www.heppers.net. Okay. Is there any... It, it the the collar hooks up to the Wi-Fi, so there's no there's no subscription model to this, is there? It's it's not a subscription model. It's a, just a direct purchase of the device. Okay, so you purchase the device, connect it up to your home Wi-Fi. Can you connect it up to more than one Wi-Fi? Oh, uh, actually, this device is only connected to one Wi-Fi. If you want to do another Wi-Fi, they need to then you need to do the provisioning again. Because okay. in what what is happening is an application in application through application this device and home Wi-Fi and app together need to be connected. Okay. Well, the reason why I was asking that is in uh, if your Wi-Fi goes down, uh, maybe it can connect up to the neighbor's Wi-Fi, or dogs find a way to get out of houses and they mm -hmm. seem to go in, in patterns. That you know they'll find another house. So if you have a friend. That, that the collar connect connect up to the other Wi-Fi, then you might be able to to uh, find your dog. So that that's that's where I was going with that. But uh, that's not a big deal. It's just one of those one of those things I was thinking out loud. So right. <laughs> so all right. So <laughs> what was the website once again? It's a www dot pet pulse p e t p u l s dot net pet pulls p e t p u l s dot net and uh, you can get the collar system so all right perfect well thank you very much for your time and i appreciate uh, i appreciate coming on you're you're uh, you're in seoul aren't you uh, yes we are in seoul yes okay How, how's the weather there in korea i miss it well in uh, you know last couple of days uh, I, 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 you know i'm probably saying that more than a week we really a kind of uh, experience like the Siberian winter. Ah. <laughs> so it ben, was I'm not very missing cold it. last week. Yes. <laughs> oh, you miss them. Okay. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not missing. It's cold here. So I, 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 it's all good. So. <laughs> right. Probably it's not the time that you want to come to Seoul right now. It's, yeah. It's pretty cold. Yeah, yeah. October is a good time to come to Seoul and, and walk the night market and, and, uh, and just uh, enjoy the food because there's a lot of great barbecue there. <laughs> oh yeah, barbecue and a nice beer, and then you probably you know bomb shot that you enjoyed with your uh, friends. That's the yep. best. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. So, all right. Well, thank you very much for your time. I'm sorry, come say hamada for your time. Oh, and uh, and uh, you, I hope you have a, a great rest of your CES. All right, thank you very much. Thanks a lot for watching this video for the CES Virtual by Geekazine. If you're over on geekazine.com or 
youtube.com forward slash geekazine. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell notification so you know when the next video comes out. Until next time, you guys geek out and take care.